Welcome to the next lesson. Today we are going to be building a header as well as styling that header. And it's part of a three or four part series where we're going to be creating our first fully fleshed out website with colors and spacing and a header, a banner image, a body area, and a footer, as well as attempting to make it responsive by making it adjust itself in various mobile sizes. This will be our final product. We might even add a little bit more to the bottom, but today all we're going to be building is this top header area. So let's go ahead into my site, into courses, and get to that table of contents where we start each one of these lessons. We're going to scroll down to lesson eight and hit on the glitch template button. At this point, you'll be prompted to remix the edit to have your own copy. Go ahead and do that and rename your file something that you'll easily remember, like project one dash your name, or you can even follow this convention with replacing your name in the master area. That'll be your copy. And you'll see things we normally see in index HTML where we're gonna do a lot of our work, our, our empty style sheet where we're gonna be doing even more work in this case. Uh, and script JS, which we're not gonna use. But the one interesting thing about this one is that I actually have the solution for you here for the index and here for the styles. So if you ever get lost at any point and you want to see the finished product, you can maybe take a look at those two and see where you went wrong or maybe add the whole thing and start removing line by line. That is how I learned. So it could be a good way just to see how each line affects the code in a particular way and to see if the order matters because sometimes it does. But let's get started with a blank slate. We see that we have nothing on our screen yet. So if we look over here at our model, first thing we're gonna to wanna to create is this area and perhaps the picture. Let's see if we can do that. So we'll go over to our index HTML area. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this actually to another screen so I can take a look at the model while I'm working. You guys can maybe add it over here to the right hand side or, or if I were you, I would work on two screens a lot easier to, to code that way. And I am going to start writing some of our information. So first thing I want to do is create a header tag. And in this header tag, I'm going to create a nav. I'm going to just stay in the index HTML for now. Line this up a little bit. Ah, right there. Okay, and in that nav tag, remember because we're always placing everything inside of each other, indentation but also creating hierarchy that way and I'm gonna create an unordered list hold on no I'm gonna curate four a tags so that they show up side by side and I'm gonna rename them a home about work contact Take a look at what we have. And we see they're side by side, they're all links, but they're over here to the upper left hand corner. That's fine for now. When you're working on HTML, just want to get your pieces in place for now. We can do the trial and error of positioning it and styling it later on, but for now, let's just get all the pieces in place. We know that we're missing this image right here. So let's get this image. And I believe I have already set this up in your assets folder. So if you have made a remix, you'll have access to everything in the assets, including some trash from when I was building the site. But this is what you need right here. This is the image that we're going to use. Feel free to use another image <clears throat> for, your, for your upper header area. There are other areas where we need images. You can replace those with, you, with what you want to. I would say to choose this one because it's the perfect size, but it's not actually. But it's the one I'm going to use now, and I'm going to have to resize it later. So... In order to grab a picture from Glitch, you can bring a picture from the internet and just drag it in here and use your own. I already dragged this one in. So then after it is in your assets folder, you click it like this, and this is what you want right here. This is what's gonna go in the source attribute of your image tag. Hit the copy, and you're copied, and go back. And I want it to show up to the left, so I'm gonna put it to the left, and for now I'm gonna embed it in the nav tag. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it there. Remember the image is a self-closing tag, so that's fine right there. And you're gonna put the copied URL in here. Let's see what we have. And we see our image taking the place 
of the links by pushing them down you could see here that because of its block styling nothing can show up over here to the left of it or even if it does it's not going to show up here to the bottom pretty much this whole block is now taken up and this image has been moved down and to the right to accommodate for this image but that's not exactly what we want yet but our pieces are now in place so we can start with CSS. We might have to change the structure of our HTML if we have trouble, but I want to first get this image smaller and I want to spread out our elements to the left and right side of the page. One way I know we can do that is via Flexbox, but we're going to have to do some trial and error there. So first I'm going to, we're done here. So we have our HTML, we have our header, which houses both of our elements. We have our nav, which just gives it Hmm. Not sure if I should keep that image in there, but I'll think about it. Um, and I want to make these two elements, this and then this set, as two children of a single parent. And how could I do that? Let's take a look at the solution, actually, and see what I did before. So I created a div box as opposed to a nav, so I didn't use a nav at all. I made that first image the first child of that box. Ah, and that's what I did. Yeah. I was getting a sense of that as I was talking before. So let me explain what I did here in our version. So in order to get Flexbox to work, which I'm going to get into in a minute, it's just a, a way to lay things out. It's just a fancy word for that. Um, I need the one element that is a box to be a Flexbox and have only two children total. So first, let's remove this image tag and place it here. The header is, the header tag is kind of unimportant at this point, so I'm just going to give it some space. And then we have one child, two child, and right here. So, follow, see if you can follow me here. We have one div, which is a box, that holds everything that we're going to look at right now. Its first direct child is this image, and its second direct child is this nav. Now, this first direct child doesn't have any children itself, but this nav does, but it doesn't matter because it's going to treat only these two as important. So, I'm going to put a red border over the entire div of Flexbox example so you can see the whole area that we're working in. I'm going to put a blue border around the image, and I'm going to put a blue bo a green border around the nav so you can see the difference between each one of the elements. And then we'll see what happens when we change it from its default setting to Flexbox. So we're going to jump into the styles. And what did we say? We said Flexbox example is going to have fudge. Hold on. As we see now, our whole flex box has a red border. We are going to give our image tag a blue border. Hmm, that didn't work. Oh, I see. That is a native element, not a class. And we can see now that it has, that is that particular child of the red. Let's make this a little bolder so you know that this is the parent. This is the parent element, and that's one child. And then our nav, also a native element. And get a green one. So here we are, almost done. We have a parent of a red Flexbox example, and it has one kid and two kids. And this is the block element, so it takes up the whole block. And you can see this one also taking up a whole block down here. And it's not easy. In the past, it's been even harder to get them to be side by side.
but a cool cheat is to use Flexbox. Now Flexbox is a CSS layout system and it has a couple default properties. Number one, as soon as you create something as a Flexbox, it's gonna say, okay, all your elements that used to be stacked on top of each other are now next to each other. Don't ask me why, they just are. And we use that to our advantage because sometimes we really want things to be side by side and it's hard to do it in traditional SCSS or CSS. So this is kind of a good way to at least get started with the process of getting things where we wanna be. So let's just add this. Our, without us seeing it, our block is already this. It's always display block, that's the default setting. So it's invisible because that's how it's always supposed to be. You call the display property and you add a new value of flex. That makes that box now a flex, that, that div now a flex box and all of its children flex children which should set them side by side. So now we're doing well. We can remove our borders. I'm gonna keep one. And let me teach you some more properties of Flexbox. Another good Flexbox property is the justified content one. I'll add some documentation in the notes over here. But for now, just know that there's a particular property called justify content and we can put the value space between to have equal space in between the two children right now there's only two so there's going to be equal space between them based on how big the size of the page is so we'll do justify content space between and we see that now there is equal space in between the two elements and as the page gets smaller, there will always be equal space until the space runs out. Um, do you see this area around the red? I kind of want it to be pressed against the walls of the page, but it has a default margin that is invisible that we have to remove. Um, so first of all, let's get our colors right. There's a page I like called flatuicolors.com. And I am going to choose something close to that original yellow, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, I'll make it orange for, for the sake of making it different. Um, if you go on this page and you just hit the color you want, it'll copy the hex value and you're done. I'm going to show, I'm gonna remove this and add a new property that you might not know called background color. Guess what it does? You put in the hex value there, don't forget your semicolon. And now we see that our whole flex box is orange, but this is an unexpected bug. Let's actually solve this now. Let's go into our image and make it smaller. Um, let's say 100 px height, 100 px. See if that makes a difference. Okay, it's still taking up the entire size of the header area. Hmm. We'll solve that in a minute. What I was gonna say is to get rid of that little space in between, you gotta give a whole property to the body. Now the body, if you remember, is everything on our page. And it has by default a margin of a couple pixels that we're gonna set to zero. Once we set it to zero, we'll see that now everything's pressed up against the right. So this image is 100 px by 100 px, and that's why the entire header is that size. So how can we get it to show up on the inside? Hold on. Fox, this is all correct. Header. We got to add some padding to the header. OK, Lenny in the past figured this out, but Lenny in the future is having some trouble. Um, if we add header to all the elements, everything gets pushed down. So first of all, let's make this even smaller. It's gonna make the whole thing smaller for now. But then let's add a new property up here called header. And let's add padding top of 100 px and let's just see what happens. Maybe it's not in our example, we wanna put it here. There we go. So 
follow my instructions or reverse engineer what I did in the past. Every time you are trying to solve a problem with HTML and CSS, you'll find different ways to do some things and some things work in some contexts, some things work in others. You can probably figure out the answers why in, in an example that's as small as making a header. But just remember that it's like an iterative process that you figure out as you go along. I included the padding top to my Flexbox example because that is where my elements are currently living. And I still want the header to maintain its shape. So I gave the entire header a background color, and but I only gave the padding to this. So it pushes down from the header. And you can see here, it's being pushed down along with everything. Oh, sorry, I'm pointing with my fingers and realize you can't see that on the screen. Um, but that's a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and modify that to, let's say 50. Let's add our padding bottom right away. Okay, we're making some headway here. So then what's left? We have a little bit of space over here, a little bit of space over here. And this doesn't look quite right. So first of all, let's move our image over, I wanna say 50 pixels. So we'll do margin left 50 pixels. See how that looks. That got pushed in, that is now in its correct spot. And let's go ahead and move our nav in from the right 50 pixels as well. Now the very left, and that still doesn't look quite right. I'll fix that in a minute. So let's actually work on this nav right here. We have our A elements inside and we're gonna make this nav now into a flex box so we could use some of its properties too. So you can embed flex boxes within flex boxes. All that's gonna happen is now this will be a flex box as well as a flex item from this flex box. And the same thing will happen to this one. This will become a flex item and this will become a flex box. This is a flex box and a flex item. Um, that just lets you know what kind of properties you can have, right? So if you go to like flex box docs, you'll be able to see some of the tips and tricks that you'll be able to XXX using Flexbox. And I'll link to this so you can see how everything relates to each other. Relates to each other is that one of them is a flex container, the other one is a flex item. And they have different, they have different them. So if we go back to finish up, we're gonna make that nav. Let me close, let me close. my computer's slowing down. And hell, let's see if this works. Okay, you can see that everything moved in. So here's a special thing I want to do. I want to say that for all the nav A tags, that's all the A tags that are in a nav tag, give it a border of solid red 1px. Ah, now we see that each one of these A tags. So for every nav's A tag, put a border solid red PX to erase that. I want to give each one of these a margin right of 50 PX, actually 25. So they have some space in between. Ah, perfect. And hmm. So let's let's pump that up to 40. I want each one of those to be color white. And I do not want underline, so I'll do text decoration none to get rid of that. And now all we got to work on is the spacing underneath. So I'm going to use the inspect element tool to figure out just the proper amount of spacing. We see that these are lined up perfectly. We see that up here. So it's the problem is in here. If this was centered, it would be centered on both ends. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plop that down a little bit in total to 35. Make it look a little bit better. And then I'm gonna push these down a little bit using kind of a cheat. I'm gonna throw some margin top on this nav element. Hmm, that won't work. 
maybe on each individual a tag there we go and we're just gonna push this up until it gets semi excuse me <laughs> All right, so we're going to add a margin top of about 15 to the nav A. And after that, I think we're done. Let's see. Margin top with the PX. All right, let's see. How do we do? Just about right. Maybe we can get a nicer font in there. But it looks like we were able to knock it out in 20 minutes. So that's the first lesson. Feel free to play around with this version if you followed along or grab the finished version and see if you can mess with it and understand what happens. In this lesson, we learned a lot about structuring our HTML, but we're really focused on Flexbox, but we only barely scratched the surface. So make sure you read some of the documentation I added and rewatch the video a couple times so you can get just the feel for this in, in 30 lines of code for HCSS and about 10 for HTML, we were able to create this header that not only looks okay and semi-modern, just happens to be responsive just by the fact that we use Flexbox. So we're saving a step there. Uh, still some modifications to be made at the smallest sizes, but it's a lot to do in, in so few amount of, of lines of code. And in the past with floats and with other CSS layout styles, tables, this kind of thing took a lot more work. So this is the modern way to build it. It constantly keeps changing. So just give it some practice, but understanding the underlying values and, and um, under, um, underlying concepts of how this works is going to help when it changes and adjusts in the future. So I'll see you in the next one. We're going to be building this image. It's going to be a lot quicker and we're going to assume that this is already done. We're just going to plop it down here and make it fit our style. And maybe I'll even show you how to grab a picture and make it fit with the color scheme that you chose up here. Um, all right. So see you next time.